Problem number eight on practice quiz number one gives you this pattern, asks you to write a rule for it. Um, if we investigate this pattern a little, we'll notice that it is plus six, plus eight, plus 10, plus 12, plus 14. And then the second difference is a constant plus two. So this tells me I have a quadratic pattern. And the quadratic pattern has a general rule of a sub n equals something n squared plus something n plus something. Furthermore, since it is a plus 2 each time, I know that this is a coefficient of 1. So I can start out my rule by looking at a little t-chart of the term numbers 1 through 6, and then the terms 6, 12, 20, 30, 42, and 56. I know that my first part of my rule is going to be n squared from the pattern I observed earlier. Then I'm going to add something times n plus something. Now either of those somethings could be zero, but I'm going to investigate and see what those seem to be. So I'm saying that 6 has to be equal to 1 squared plus 1 times something plus something. So I'm going to start out with the 1 squared here, and the 2 squared, which is 4, and the 3 squared, which is 9, 16, 25, and 36. I know that's n squared plus something. So 1 plus what equals 6? 1 plus 5. 4 plus 8 equals 12. 20 plus 11 equal, or 9 plus 11 equals 20. 16 plus 14 equals 30. 25 plus... 17 equals 42, and 36 plus 20 equals 56. So now I'm looking at this pattern of numbers. This pattern of numbers is going to finish my rule. Okay, I've already got the n squared part. Now what do I have to do to get the something n plus something? Well, if I'm going up plus 3 each time with these pa this rule, that tells me that this number is going to be a 3. It's going to be 3n plus something, because this is a linear pattern. Every time I go up 1 in the term number, I go up 3 in the, in the number. So this is a linear pattern with a slope of 3. Then to figure out what the second number is, the constant, I can just do an example. I know when n is 1 that a sub 1 should be, give me 6. So a sub 1, so far my rule said would be 1 squared plus 3 times 1, and then plus a constant. I'll just call that c. And I know that has to equal 6. So 1 plus 3 plus c equals 6. That's 4 plus c, so c has to equal 2. So this number here has to equal 2. So my rule ends up being a sub n equals n squared plus 3n plus 2. Now it's always a good idea to check with another term to make sure that rule is correct. So if I want to see, if I put in 2 for n, do I get 12? So a sub 2 equals 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. That's 4 plus 6, which is 10, plus 2 is 12. So that checks out. So this appears to be a good rule for my sequence. Now, there is one other way to do this problem that doesn't always work. The way I just showed always works. If this constant right here is not 2 and it's 4, for example, then this would be a 2. Whatever the second difference is, take half of that, and that's the coefficient of your n squared. And then you can find the rest of the, the, rest of the pattern. Um, but there is there is another pattern that sometimes works that you can see with this, this uh, sequence. So let's... Look at this, 6, 12, 20, uh, let's see what the other numbers were, 30, 42, and 56. One way to look at a, a sequence is just to number the terms and see, is there any pattern I can see that relates the term to the term number? So I know that since it's quadratic, I've already figured out that it's quadratic, that quadratics can sometimes be factored into something like this. a sub n equals n plus something times n plus something, or minus, plus or minus something. So are there two numbers that multiply together to give me each of these terms that form some sort of a pattern? 
So when I look at this, I can think this is 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. This is 1 times 12, 2 times 6, or 3 times 4. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Um, so I'm just going to kind of write that down here. So 1 times 6, 2 times 3, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. And I'm starting to see a pattern that I kind of like here. I'm seeing 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 5 times 6, 6 times 7, 7 times 8. So I see a pattern where I'm a very distinct pattern in multiplication that's going here. So let's how does that relate to the term number? Well, in term number 1, I multiply 2 times 3. In term number 2, I multiply 3 times 4. For term number 3, 4 times 5. So the first number is 1 bigger than the term number, and the second number is 2 bigger than the term numbers. So it looks like, in general, what I'm doing is n plus 1 times n plus 2. Now, if I multiplied this out, I would get n squared plus n plus 2n plus 2, which is n squared plus 3n plus 2, which is exactly what I had before. So this is another equally good rule for the same sequence. So there's a couple of ways to do a quadratic sequence. The first way always works, the second way sometimes works.